popularity of cruise vacations has increased dramatically over the last 20 years. More than 10 million people a year will set sail for a holiday at sea, and many of those travelers would tell you it's the dining experience that keeps them coming back again and again. For many people, cruising is the ultimate vacation experience. Escaping your cubicle for adventure on the high seas serves up some options you won't find on dry land. You unpack once, go to several ports of call, and you have lots of entertainment options just a few steps from your stateroom. Cruise vacation, well, you've got everything included right here on the ship. Many, many dining options, all types of nightclubs. We've got shows for you, uh, usually a couple shows each day. Uh, we've got uh, a variety of activities and events to do, and it's, it's kind of neat because everything's literally within five minutes walking distance. Since 1970, the number of vacationers taking cruise vacations has risen by close to 10% a year. A dramatic increase in the number of ships is one reason for the jump, but passengers on board the Carnival Paradise have their own ideas why cruising works for them. Being on the water, looking at the ocean, people watching, dancing, eating, drinking. Food is great, entertainment is great, and the lovely weather is marvelous. This is my fourth cruise. What keeps you coming back? The food. <laughs> Sure, the scenery may be spectacular, but the cruise vacation destination for many folks hinges on the delightful delicacies of culinary mastery. Simply said, we like to dine. The food is fantastic. I'm obsessed with the all-you-can-eat frozen yogurt. <laughs> I've visited about 10 times a day. But there's so many delicious things, I try to get a little bit of everything to taste it. Just too much food, basically. And you can have almost anything you want. Great meals have always been a draw for cruise vacationers, but these days, guests on board ships like the Carnival Paradise have a dizzying array of food choices from the heartland. Well, many years ago, the Lido deck, which is our relaxed dining, would have been burgers, hot dogs, coleslaw, potato salad. Um, if you go there today, you'll find a 24-hour pizzeria, a, a deli bar, a Mongolian station. We have a rotisserie. You know, there's the expectations of, of what we produce and what we offer our guests now are much higher than many, many years ago. Well, change in uh, because now we are more becoming uh, like a floating resort and less like a ship. More than 500 crew members make up the ship's food and beverage department, the largest section on board. For the ship's passengers, that means something to sample all the time anytime. If you go to see the room service is open all the time, around the clock, then we have the pizzeria which is around the clock. We have uh, different dining rooms. We have a formal dining room where you have a regular seatings and assigned seatings. And then we have, this is the casual dining room. The breakfast is going on until 12 for the late risers. And then bistro dinner is from 6 o'clock onwards until 9.30. And then after that the midnight buffet comes around 11.30, 12 o'clock. Once a week, in home port, the paradise replenishes provisions for the next sailing. It's a finely orchestrated dance, getting heartland food favorites from the port warehouses to the ship's galley. Um, the suppliers come on to the pier. Um, our store manager and the sous chef or the chef will be out on the pier checking the quality, checking the, the, the amounts that we ordered to receive correctly. Um, it'll be brought on board, um, go to the store and facilities where we have vast expanses of refrigeration and storage. Most of the food, our fresh produce is all homegrown in America. We have cheese, as you know, from Wisconsin, potatoes from Idaho, and uh, all the other parts of America. Most of the food is homegrown. Spray some more butter on this. And even before the ship sets sail on the next cruise, the kitchen is working full time. Just mix it a bit. That means those homegrown items from the heartland are being fashioned into meals for the ship's 2,600 guests. Ready for some numbers? 41,000 eggs, 35,000 shrimp, 55,000 hamburgers, 3,000 pizzas, 600 racks of lamb, 10,000 tomatoes, 20,000 potatoes, and more than 11,000 bananas, along with 1,000 fresh pineapples. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. 2,600 heads if you're talking lettuce. 
the most important thing on a sea going vessel is we need to see that all what is needed to be served on the menus are on board before we sail because just like a restaurant we cannot go out to the supermarket and buy something so we got to see that everything what is ordered is on board according to right quality quantity so that we can serve our guest that is the most important challenge seeing that all food is on board before we sail the challenges i would say most of the times we all are very well organized we are organized by the restaurant side we are organized by the chef side where we have the uh, all the food the appetizer the soup the salads are very well made in advance and you know we are ready for the show tonight is formal night in the dining room and the featured item on the menu is a cruise favorite lobster 360 pounds of the cherished crustacean will be prepared plated and served to diners. Guy, please enjoy, huh? Bon appetit. If a guest orders a lobster, and if 12 guests on the same table order a lobster, all the 12 lobsters need to look identical. So that is part of our specification which we follow. You come after another six months and eat the lobster again, you'll, it will be exactly the same. Prepared, cooked, and presented. Very cheerful, ma'am. It's ready. Yeah. Trying new offerings with established Heartland favorites the food and beverage staff hopes that guests will enjoy foods they've never tasted before. In addition, they work to appeal to the taste buds of the next generation of passengers. I love this ship. Gone are the days of the hot dogs and burgers for the kids. You know, it's, it's a lot of salad stuff. And it's, it's much healthier for the families as well. And this is why families come to us, because we, you know, we do take care of their, the child's needs so the parents can get a little bit of a break away from their kids as well. On the downtime between meals, guests try their hand at activities as they sail to the next port of call. Activities which may even help them burn a few calories. As a cruise director, well, I get to bring everybody the fun. I get to bring them the shows and the, and the activities and the, the live music and the, the, the nightclubs, that type of thing. And uh, to see uh, guests out there uh, just enjoying themselves, it's really fantastic. <laughs> Family cruise vacations look to be a growth area for the cruise industry. More than a million and a half youngsters were on cruise vacations in 2008. And cruising in general has proven to be a boon to Heartland producers providing those homegrown products from grains to vegetables, meat, poultry, and fish. The cruise industry generated spending of more than $18 billion in goods and services in 2007, with job creation and purchases in all 50 states. And if you sample passengers on their experiences, most surveys show that setting sail continues to be a favorite holiday choice. That's some very positive food for thought for those on board.